Um, so everything we said to date uh, described BOPT in the context of new construction in terms of uh, mortgage payments, um, the technologies that were displayed in BOPT were all uh, in the context of new construction. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time now showing how to do uh, analysis and retrofit uh, for existing buildings. There are uh, a few wrinkles and nuances and, and challenges in terms of doing uh, appropriate analysis in the context of uh, existing buildings that we want to show. Um, and so before I switch over to uh, a retrofit project, I just want to show you um, uh, contrasted with what's showing up in new construction. So if I go to the options screen, and this is a project, this is the new construction optimization. If I go to the central air conditioner category, what you're going to see are air conditioners starting at 013 or higher. Uh, in the BIOPTA library, there are actually air conditioners below 013, uh, tier 8, tier 10, for example. But because those do not meet the federal minimum standard, BIOPTA is, is uh, filtering those from you so that you don't get distracted by them when you're in uh, new construction analysis. It's trying to show you just technologies that make sense uh, when you're in you, you're designing a new construction building. Um, so likewise, if we go to the furnace category, the minimum furnace AFUE that we see is 78% AFUE. Uh, when I when I create a new project in, in retrofit mode, you'll see that there are actually uh, technologies with a lower efficiency than this uh, stored in the library. Um, so I'm just showing you this as a contrast to uh, retrofit mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now create a new project. And I'm going to choose to go into retrofit mode. The retrofit mode, uh, more often than not, looks very similar to new construction mode. As you can see here on the geometry screen, it's, it's nearly identical to what was in the new construction mode. You can draw your building. Um, the site screen also is, is nearly identical. There's a, uh, a few things that are different here in terms of whether you're, you're going to pay for your uh, retrofit package in terms of cash or loan, uh, tax deductible or non-tax deductible loans. Um, it's not mortgage uh, centric anymore. Um, but by and large, those two input screens are identical. Um, it's really the options input screen where a lot of the changes show up. Uh, so the first thing to show up is that now that I'm in a uh, retrofit project, and by the way, if you haven't noticed, uh, the choices that you make sort of show up here in the title bar. So this is a standard project type, and this is a retrofit uh, application type. And one of the first things that jumps out is now that there, now there's an existing design tab. So this is the tab where you describe your existing building. Um, and this is going to be used partly so that you can see energy savings relative to your existing building. Um, and partly it's going to be used so that BIA provides you with suitable retrofit technologies to evaluate. Uh, so what do I mean by that? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to the wall, inside wall category. Um, and so let's say that I have an uninsulated 2x4 wall in my building. If I then want to evaluate uh, putting in some wall insulation options, you can see that when I click on my design, we'll come to reference later, but if I click on my design, it's a much shorter list than what was available before. And this is because it's been filtered by a few things. It's not showing, so I'll click back on existing. So for example, there are a bunch of fiberglass bat options. Um, it's not going to show those because that's a pretty, and, and maybe someday it will, but that's a pretty aggressive uh, retrofit strategy if you're going to tear open your wall cavity and put in fiberglass bats and then, you know, re-drywall it and everything. So at the moment, what we have are some some uh, um, uh, blow and fill. Blow and fill? Oh, that's that weird to me. Fill and drill? Fill and drill. Yeah, and drill. Drill, drill. <laughs> uh, technologies about blowing in uh, cellulose or fiberglass, and you're going to do it up to, for a two-by-four wall, up to R13. Um, and 
all the options are specific to a two by four wall. So for example, if I go back to my existing building now, and I said actually I've got an uninsulated, let's say I have an uninsulated two by six wall, probably pretty unique, but um, if I did have that building, now my choices are R19, which is what would fit in a two by six cavity. Um, so BF is trying to present you with only retrofit uh, technologies that make sense. And the reason that this is important is because the specific action or retrofit measure that you're taking has a cost very specific to that technology. The cost here that BEOPT is displaying is not simply the cost of the cellulose insulation itself, but it's the cost of knowing that you're blowing in the cellulose into an existing wall. So this cost here displayed for R19 cellulose is actually going to be different than the cost of if you put in cellulose in the context of new construction, where perhaps you don't have to drill through um, you know, brick, for example, or um, some of those other wrinkles. So we're providing uh, costs that are very tailored and, and retrofit measures that are very tailored uh, to your existing building. Um, I'll do one more example here, and I'll go to the central air conditioner category. Um, because this is, this is a little bit more involved here. And so on the existing tab now, uh, in contrast to new construction, I can see that I have older air conditioners, CR8 and CR10 are showing up in, exist, in addition to uh, air conditioners that meet the federal minimum uh, standard. Uh, so I can click one of these options for my existing building, and I can even put in an age. I can say that it's actually a 15-year-old air conditioner. Um, and that's going to be important um, later on. And you can see there's a lifetime for these air conditioners of, of by default, 19 years. Um, when I come to my design now, what has is, again, it only shows tier 13 or better. Um, but it shows that the tier 13 is selected at wear out. There's this column that says replace. And it specifies when the technology is going to be replaced. So what this is saying is that the minimum of what you can do is to replace a SEER 8 air conditioner with a SEER 13 air conditioner when the SEER 8 air conditioner wears out. And the reason we do this is because we run life cycle analysis over, generally speaking, a 30-year analysis period. And based on the inputs, 15-year-old air conditioner, and generally speaking, we know air conditioners only last 19 years, so generally speaking, there's only four years of useful life left on this air conditioner. So it's unfair uh, or unrealistic to do uh, an analysis. Let's say if you're looking at uh, uh, putting in wall insulation, it would be uh, unrealistic to say, uh, how does my new wall insulation fare in the context of a CR8 air conditioner when you know that that CR8 air conditioner is not going to last for more than a few years on average and that when it uh, wears out, you have to put in at least a CR13. So BF is trying to put in um, uh, four technologies where we know what the minimum federal standard is. BF is trying to uh, have realistic uh, retrofit scenarios over time such that your energy savings reflects that situation. Um, if I were to go back to my existing building, and my existing building actually had, let's say, a Sears 13 air conditioner, maybe that one's also 15 years. Now when I come to my design, uh, again, the, the minimum is to keep in that Sears 13, and it'll get replaced if we're out. Or you can investigate, let's say, putting in a Sears 15 air conditioner. And you have the option to evaluate that either today or at wear out. Um, so you could actually have one design, let's say, where you uh, rename this, and I'll call this my SEER 15 today design. And I could create another design, and I'll rename this to my SEER 15 wear out design, and change it to wear out. And so this would be an example where I could see what is my energy savings over the analysis period of these two different scenarios. If I upgraded my air conditioner today, even though it has some remaining years of, uh, of life on it, or if I were to wait for it to, to die and then put in my new air conditioner. Um, so that's 
so that's an interesting use case. Um, but like I said, the other use case is not in this category itself, but in, for example, envelope categories, if you're investigating putting in wall insulation, you want to do so under the context of what is happening to your air conditioner over the next 30 years. Um, so BOP is facilitating that type of analysis. Um, and so any any category that is an equipment category or that can wear out, then on the existing tab has a input for age and on your uh, retrofit or user design uh, tab has options for whether it's evaluated today or wear out. Um, those don't show up in envelope categories where essentially the installation lasts uh, for the lifetime of the building. Uh, the last thing I'll mention uh, is so some of that complexity we've tried to build into a automated reference building. Um, so again, purpose of the reference building is to show energy savings and incremental costs for your designs relative to that reference. And so what we wanted our reference to be, and so this is uh, the default reference in BOP, it's called existing with min replace. We wanted this to be the um, sort of business as usual situation. And so if I'm on my existing building and let's say I've got a SEER 8 air conditioner in there, when I go to the reference, this is going to be an automated reference, so everything's grayed out, but I can see what BOP is choosing. And what it's choosing again is the SEER 13 aware app. That is the, uh, the, the do nothing or business as usual situation over the 30 years that you're going to have your SEER 8 air conditioner until it wears out, and then SEER 13 would come in. And so in this situation, what I'd be doing is I'd be evaluating my SEER 15 air conditioner, two different scenarios against this reference where the reference is SEER 8 for several years and then SEER 13 for the remainder of the analysis period. And that's what your energy savings would be um, compared to it. Um, uh, again, we, we think it's unrealistic to show energy savings relative to simply your existing building without taking into account these mini replacements when some of these replacements are going to improve your building um, and potentially in just a couple of years. Um, so this is a, a wrinkle uh, that we try to make as user-friendly as possible for people to do this type of retrofit analysis. Um, but it is, it is a little more involved, and it, it does contrast a, a little with the new construction uh, analysis in BIOC. Um, and actually, I should mention one last thing uh, while we're here, which is um, when you have uh, HVAC equipment, um, in addition to the typical options of you can you can choose to auto size your equipment uh, when you're in a retrofit situation or put in a fixed size. Um, there's also this option for same as existing, which is the default. So same as existing means that anytime my air conditioner is replaced, I'm going to put in the same size as whatever I specified for my existing building. And for my existing building, that could either be an auto size calculation based on manual J, or I actually know what the tonnage is of my air conditioner. Um, so that's what the same as existing is, that the contractor isn't going to do any sort of downsizing. You're just going to put in the same size air conditioner as you had. Um, if you do choose one of these other uh, options, either auto size or fixed size, that will apply to, again, whenever your uh, air conditioner uh, replacement occurs in time, um, that simulation will then get the, the new size, um, and all, all simulations after that point will have that size as well. Um, so I just wanted to point out that that's also slightly different than the new construction mode. Okay, so let's see. It's uh, 2 o'clock here, and we've got um, about 10 or 15 more minutes of things to cover, so I just wanted to make people aware of that. Um, uh, the, the remaining tasks are we're going to talk a little bit about the library manager, uh, which is how you create your own options uh, rather than just using the ones built into BOP if, if they don't suit your purposes, um, as well as uh, modifications to cost. Um, and then quickly talk about the this detailed visualization program to be able to dig into simulation results in more detail 
an hour by hour basis and see um, uh, sort of for diagnostic purposes or to make sure you understand uh, what the simulations are doing. Uh, so we have about 10 or 15 more minutes of material here.